In this video, we're going to take a look at how to start and stop an Oracle database. And we're going to look at the two major systems that most Oracle systems run on, and that's Linux and Windows. On Microsoft Windows, it's relatively easy to figure out what databases are on your system and how to start and stop them. Uh, Oracle provides a, a method of interfacing with the services mechanism within uh, Microsoft. And as you can see, I have a services window here on my uh, Windows machine that I'm running uh, Windows 7 on right now. And to figure out exactly what's going on and what you have installed inside your system, just have to look under alphabetize all the different services that are out there and then just look at the ones that start with Oracle. Anything that says Oracle service and then a name is the name of the particular instance that's running on your server. So if you need to figure out how many different instances are running on your server at any particular time, just go into the services um, applet inside of Microsoft Windows and you can see uh, what's running there. So on this particular uh, Windows machine, I have a service called Sandbox. And this instance is running right now on my system. And if I wanted it to start up automatically when uh, my machine booted, I have the ability to go in there and look at the properties. And I can simply set the startup type to automatic. And if I set it to automatic, as soon as my, um, uh, my PC boots up, uh, the database will boot up automatically. If yeah, I have it set to manual and I want to start up the database, it's as simple as just going in there and saying, okay, go ahead and start it or go ahead and stop it. It's a real easy way for me to figure out uh, not only what's on my system, but to start and stop my database pretty easily. So if I want to go ahead and uh, stop the instance, it automatically stops the service that's out there. You can see it's going there in the background. It'll take a couple of seconds to uh, stop it. Once that's done, the instance is no longer running on my Windows machine. Once I want to start it up, I simply start up that service and the database is up and running. The thing that trips some people up is people think that the service and the instance are the same thing. If the service is running, the database is running. If the service is not running, the database is not running. That's true 99% of the time, but there is a strange situation where the service could be running and the database actually is not running. And I'll show you an example of that in a second here. I'm going to pause the video and uh, just wait for this to actually shut down and then I'll start it up again. Okay, my database finally shut down. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and actually start it up. So I just can right click and click on start. I can single click on sandbox and hit the play button here. Either one will go ahead and do that. So again, I'm going to pause the recording while it starts up and then hop on again once it's uh, finally ready to go. Okay, we're finally back. Our database is up and running again, Oracle Service Sandbox. And this is the quirky thing that I can show you where it seems like um, the service and the instance are tied together, but they're really not. So the service is up and running, so the database is up and running, right? So I should be able to do something like select uh, sysdate from dual, and you can see, oh, I have to connect again because I shut down the database, so I'm going to just connect again and then do a select sysdate from dual and everything is fine there. But from within SQL Plus, I can actually shut the database down. So I can do shut down immediate I have to be logged on as the uh, the uh, the creator of the database the sys user of the database or the operating system user who's gone ahead and installed the Oracle software and once I shut down the database will be in one of those weird states where the service from the operating system point is up and running but the instance actually isn't so again I'm gonna pause the video and resume it again once the database shuts down So as you can see, I've successfully shut down my database. So this is the weird circumstance where the service is still up and running. If I refresh this at the operating system level, you can see Oracle Service Sandbox is still up and running, but the database itself actually isn't. So it could give you one of those confusing things where when you try to connect to a database, it says, hey, I'm connected to an idle instance. How can it be idle? It's up and running. Well, the service is up and running, but the actual database isn't. So if I want to run my database, I can do startup. Now again, 99% of the time you can use the um, Oracle, I mean the Microsoft Windows Services application to go in here and, and start up or shut down your database. And that's probably how you'll do it 99% of the time. But every now and then you'll have that uh, weird thing. Linux, Unix, a little more complicated. I'm going to hop into my uh, virtual machine here. 
and you can see that uh, I'm running Oracle Enterprise Linux 5.5 and I have it inside of a virtual machine and I also have an Oracle database installed uh, in this Linux environment. It's not as easy as figuring out, okay, what's running, or what's been installed, what instances are up and running inside my Linux machine as it is on Windows. On Windows, you know, you just go to the service panel and it's right there. How do I figure out what's been installed inside of my Linux machine? So I'm going to open up a terminal here. And terminal window pops up and I'm logged in as root. What I want to do is I want to get as the, uh, the user who is... Um, installed by Oracle software which is the Oracle user in this particular box so how do I figure out what in the world is installed on this machine in Linux and Unix there's a file out there called Oratab and Oratab keeps track of all of the Oracle instances that have been installed on your particular server most places it's in the Etsy directory so if I look at Etsy and I can use the cat command to just uh, show the output of a text file to the screen if I go to Etsy or a tab, I'll see all this information on my screen. So that's exactly what the or a tab file looks like. Everything with a pound sign here at the beginning is just a comment. And you can see that I have one instance installed on this machine. It's called SND box. It's a little different. It's not called sandbox. It's called SND box. There's a colon which separates the fields. The second field that's available here is where the Oracle Home software is actually installed, Oracle DB 11.2.0 DB Home 1. That's where the database software is installed. And the third field here says, should the database start up automatically when the server boots or reboots or does anything? It's not as easy as turning this to a Y and everything just starts up automatically. There's other things that you have to do, but the first step is to turn that into a Y and I'm going to have another video that goes through all of the steps that you have to do to automatically start up your database. So just remember that uh, even though in the comments here it says uh, the third uh, field, that's misspelled there, third field indicates to the DB start utility that the database should Y or should not end be brought up at system boot time. It's not as easy as just turning that to Y and saying, okay, everything's great. Reboot my server. Hey, my database didn't start. What in the world's going on? Seeing if the database is up and running is also a little bit of a challenge in Linux. It's not as easy as Windows where you just look at the service and you can see it up and running there. The easiest way to do it, and this is one of those arcane Unix commands that you'll have to get used to if you're going to be uh, working with uh, Oracle databases on a Linux or Unix server, there's a command called ps-ef, and ps-ef will show you all of the different processes that are out there. There's thousands of processes that run on a typical Unix system, so what we want to do is we want to limit what comes back to the screen to just show us our Oracle stuff. So the pipe command is that uh, vertical bar that goes up and down, and then the grep command says just look for um, these particular values. And all of the Oracle processes that are out there on a Linux machine start with ORA underscore. So a real easy way to go out there and take a look and see what's up and running inside your database is to, uh, inside your server, is to do this PS minus EF and then pipe it to a grep command and look for ORA. Nothing's running on my machine. The only thing that uh, the PS command was able to find was the actual grep command with the ORA. If the database was actually up and running, we would see all of the different uh, processes that are associated with uh, Oracle at the Linux level. So we know that the Oracle database is called SND box, and we also know what the Oracle home is. So we have to set something called an environment variable that will uh, point Oracle to the right direction to make sure that we have all of those different pieces of information. So I have that set up automatically as part of my login, and I'm going to have another video on Linux tips and tricks for you to set this up. But again, we, if we look at the env command, it'll show all of the different uh, environment variables that have been defined for us. And because there's so many different ones out there, we don't want to scroll off the screen and have to find everything. We can do the same thing that we did with the ps command and pipe the output to the grep command and just look for stuff that, uh, begin, that has the word Oracle in it. Unix is case sensitive, so unlike Windows where you can hop around in different directories and it doesn't really care about case too much, or uh, Linux and Unix is very case sensitive, so you have to make sure that you're looking at all of the things properly. So if I do this, I can see that for my Oracle user, I have these two environment variables set. 
I have the Oracle SID system identifier set to SND box and my Oracle Home is already set. I've also done a couple of other things to make sure that uh, my uh, path is set up correctly so that I can find everything. So one of the first things that we usually do when we're going to start up a database and make sure everything is working on is the listener. The listener makes sure that we can talk back and forth to the database. So LSNRCTL is the listener control program and if I can get the status of that and say hey are you up and running what's going on so it's connecting to Linux and says nope no listener running so you know what I want to start it so I'm going to start up my listener and it says to please wait a second as it starts all the different processes in the background and then the next thing I'm going to do once the listener is up and running is I'm going to go into SQL Plus and just like when I did it before in the Windows version it's going to say hey you're connected to an idle instance nothing's up and running I'm going to start up my database and then I can check all the processes to make sure that it's actually up and running so everything started up with the listener so then I go into SQL Plus and based on what my Oracle SID environment variable is set to it's going to try to connect to that particular database so my Oracle SID from up here if I can find it and what did I do with it is it lower is set to SND box so it's going to try to connect to those memory processes associated with SND box and obviously since none of those are running it's going to come back and say hey it's an idle instance nothing's up and running so once it does that I'm going to type the startup command connect it to an idle instance I'm going to type startup and Oracle should go through the process of starting up my instance again I'm going to pause the video and come back when all of this is done all right, looks like my Oracle instance is up and running. Didn't get any error messages. Looks like it's able to start up okay. So again, if I think everything is okay, and I want to hop in now, take a look at that PS command again, I should see all of the processes that go behind the scenes that show my database up and running. There they all are. And you can see Oracle starts a lot of processes there in the background. Uh, MM ohm Sandbox, SMON Sandbox, Log Writer Sandbox, Database Writer Sandbox. These are all of the different processes that are associated uh, with my Sandbox instance. So everything seems like it's up and running. We should be able to go. Let's connect in SQL Plus and see if in fact the database is doing okay we can do a select uh, let's see table name from user tables and just taking a second here for SQL Plus to actually get started uh, unfortunately my machine is running a little low on memory so it should execute that and there's all my table names that are associated uh, with this particular schema that I'm logged into. So it looks like everything's up and running. So in this video, we took a look at finding out both on a Windows and a Linux system, okay, what instances do I have up and running and how do I start everything up and make sure that it's running?